In today's video, I want to show you a before and after of an overseeding project that I took on a couple weeks before first frost. This overseeding project is not on my lawn, it's over on my project lawn for the year. As you'll see in the upcoming segment, we started this project late in September, but for us that was only about two weeks before our first frost. Depending on where you live, your first frost could be in November, it could be in December, it could be in October. If you are thinking about taking on an overseeding project late in the fall for your area, then let this video serve as proof that it can work out even if you don't take every step possible to ensure ultimate success. All right, here we are at the project line. It is late September now. We haven't done anything to this line since somewhere around the 1st of June. Robbie, of course, has been watering and mowing the grass. And as you can see, it's looking a lot better. However, we still have weeds. And that's because we put down weed pre-emergent way too late. We knew we were putting it down way too late, but we probably did stop some of the weed that we wouldn't have had we not put it down in the first place. Today, we are finally going to be overseeding this lawn. We are going to go with a turf type tall fescue because looking at the grass blades that are here on the ground, they are mostly thick blades, which means there's this is probably an old seeded fescue lawn. Uh, some we don't know what kind of variety it is. There might be some other things mixed in, but because there's so much clumping and wide blades, we're going to go with the turf type tall fescue for an overseed. And because we've got this big tree here, right now it is not shaded at all, but various times of the year and times of the day, this is shaded. We're going to mix in a little bit of creeping red fescue, a little bit more dense under the tree and a little bit less dense throughout the rest of the house. And then maybe over here in the shaded zone. So anyway, we're going to be mixing creeping red fescue, turf type tall fescue. The creeping red is rhizomatic, so it will spread laterally ever so slightly. The turf type tall fescue will be more of a clump and it should blend in a little bit with the existing clumpiness that's in the lawn. Point here is we're using simple products. We've been using simple products and simple, uh, a simple plan of attack this whole year on this lawn to repair it. Uh, we haven't even fertilized it since the end of May, early part of June. Today, we're gonna put down a starter fertilizer to go along with the grass seed that we put down. And then we're just gonna keep watering it pretty good for the next 10 to 14 days while it germinates. Early part of October, we'll have uh, lots of little seedlings around here and we'll just see how dense and thick it gets before fall starts turning into winter. All right now, one of the common questions I get over on the website and here on the channel in comments has to do with is it too late? When does it become too late to put grass seed down? A lot of people talk about uh, getting your grass seed to not die off in uh, early freeze and early frost. For cold season grasses, it's got to get pretty frosty for a few days straight for that to be an issue. Usually most places, unless you're way up north in Canada, you're not going to have, or maybe, uh, maybe the northern states like your Montanas and your Michigans, you're not going to have too many hard cold frosts cold freezes in the month of October. Here it's the 24th of September and we live at 4,200 feet up. So I still think that this is plenty early enough in the season to put stuff down. Now I'm not putting Kentucky bluegrass down. That does take a little bit longer. That one might be a little bit more fishy, but for your tall fescues, for your fine fescues, for your perennial rise, it's all going to be just fine late in the season. Now, as I said, we're going to be using a turf type tall fescue. This is going to be a clumping grass, but because it's the turf type variety, it's not going to clump quite as much as, say, for instance, a Kentucky 31 or some of the older fescue varieties. This is a full sun grass, however. So part of this yard are going to perform really well with the tall fescue, and we're going to be blending it together with the creeping red. This is a fine fescue, which does particularly well in shady areas. So as we blend it together, especially on the edges of this yard, these two grass types are going to perform quite well together. Creeping red is also going to spread laterally a little bit throughout the growing season. So as holes or thin spots appear, the creeping red will help in fixing those areas all by itself. For starter fertilizers, I do prefer using balanced fertilizers, but for this project, we're just using over-the-counter stuff. I've got a Scott's starter fertilizer and a Greenview. Now, Scott's is going to be found just about everywhere, every big box store. I am not going to use that today. We're going to use the Greenview, and the reason for that 
is because the Scots just has too much nitrogen in it. I just don't like how much nitrogen is in it. The Scots has 24% nitrogen, 25% phosphorus, and only 4% potassium. To me, that's a no-go. It's not going to kill the project if you want to use it, but I'm not going to use it here. We're going to use the Greenview stuff, which is a better mix. It's a better NPK ratio, in my opinion. This Greenview starter fertilizer is a 10, 18, 10. So we got a lot less nitrogen in it and a lot more potassium. This is going to, the potassium is going to help the grass harden off for the winter a lot better than the Scott stuff that just doesn't have very much potassium. Grass needs potassium. So put it in there. I'd also say that there are better fertilizers out there. These are literally just over-the-counter stuff that I was able to buy at my local store. If you want some information about some of the better starter fertilizers, so if you're planning ahead, take a look in the description below. I've got an article on the website where I have outlined a number of the best starter fertilizers on the market. All right, so that's the turf-type tall fescue. We're going to be putting down basically the whole bag. That's four pounds. Well, it's three pounds. So turf-type tall fescue for overseeding you're going to be putting down roughly four pounds per thousand square feet but we're going to be mixing that together with the creeping red so we're going to put down the whole bag three pounds dump the whole thing in, dump the whole thing in. Okay. Yeah. so remember when we fertilize or put down product through these granular spreaders we put on the edge guard and go around the edges first of course we got to get the dial set to the right number depending on the size of the grass seed it's Gonna be a different number. Now I should say that this lawn, the soil under this lawn is really moist already. Just like I say on the channel all the time, whenever I put seed down, I like to heavily water the ground before the seed goes down in the first place. That way, when it comes time to start sprinkling the lawn, you don't have to moisten the seed and saturate the soil. The soil is already saturated, so you actually don't have to sprinkle the grass seed nearly as much. So this is going to do better in the shade, but it's also going to perform in the sun, but it's just going to be better in the shade than the turf type tall fescue. So they're kind of opposites, which makes them complementary. They're both within the fescue variety, another complement to each other. Now, for overseeding fine fescue, creeping red, for instance, we're going to be putting down about two pounds per every thousand square feet. For those of you planning to do this yourself, down in the description, I have a link over to the website where I have all the information that you need for grass seed application rates of all the different varieties. Uh, take a look at that. But for this, which we're going to put down two pounds per thousand square feet. So let's go ahead and measure that out. We have 1,000 square feet, so we're only going to put two pounds in the spreader. This says it's two pounds. Oh, you're right. It does say it's two pounds. So I guess we're going to use the whole bag. Yeah. Why'd you bring that scale out? I don't know. You're doing it wrong, Robbie. I know. You're do no, no, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Oh, no, you're fine. You're I fine. So when it comes to spreading fertilizer on the ground, it's not that complicated. Here we are, this is what we're gonna put down. The whole bag covers 5,000 square feet and 16 pounds. So we're gonna do 1,000 square feet. So just divide the 16 pounds by five. So it's gonna be a little over three pounds. So we're gonna measure that out and apply it here to the lawn. All right, I'm pretty sure that my baby girl here did most of the heavy labor. Probably. Yeah. Uh, she did a great job. Between her and the four-year-old back there. Hey, yeah, there he is. Hey, look at him pushing it. Okay. The job isn't all that hard. What Robbie's going to do next is he's going to turn the sprinkler on. Because we've got so much bare dirt, we don't really have to scarify the ground or dethatch it. That's why we didn't do that. We also don't need to take like a, like a seed roller over it or anything to really tamp it down because all of the seed is just sitting on top of dirt. 
So we're gonna water it just to moisten the seed. The soil is already moist. Once the seed is on the ground, we have to keep it moist for at least seven to 14 days for this grass variety. If you're doing Kentucky bluegrass, you'll probably wanna keep it moist for up to 21 days. Warm season grasses are totally different. They will generally take even longer to germinate and most people don't even seed them in the fall in the first place. Considering today is September 24th, I expect germination somewhere around the 1st of October. And by October 15th, we should get pretty good grass here. And uh, then we'll just see how long it grows until winter dormancy hits. All right, now seven weeks roughly have passed. It's November 11th here on the project lawn and you see uh, we got some cool stuff going on on the grass over there. The grass is looking significantly better. Uh, the seeds are coming up. The seeds that we put down about six to seven weeks ago are sprouting. They have been sprouting slowly. We didn't do a proper seed preparation, um, as you saw earlier in the video, and we certainly didn't cover the seed with anything at all. We just put it on the ground. By the way, I've got an entire video about will seed germinate if it's just put straight on the ground. I'll link to it down in the description. But here on the lawn, we can see that it works. It's not vigorous. It's not going to come in as quickly as if we had put a top dressing on top of it. But it does work. Let me show you where we're at. See, as we pan back here, this is freshly mowed grass. So there's a little bit of mulch clippings on the lawn surface. So this looks a little bit greener than it actually is, but it is looking excellent considering where we started earlier this year. Also considering the fact that we did things pretty lazy and we started at an inopportune time of the year. It was like late May. Now we do have some weak spots over here. Over here we still got a lot of bare dirt and a lot of weeds that never got killed off properly. So we are going to push through the winter season and start off spring before spring actually happens with a core aeration. I hope you follow along. This project is not done. In lawn care, the project is pretty much never done. We're always trying to improve for the fun of it. Now in this video, we overseeded an existing lawn that had a lot of bare dirt. But if you want to do a more substantial overseed and get quicker, better results and i have an entire video about overseeding properly up here this for this video was kind of lazy overseeding this video right here is exactly how to do it all of the steps and if you haven't seen the earlier videos in this series i'm going to link to the playlist of all of the videos on this project lawn down in the description below